These data were measured from an aluminium foil and they've been measured using a survey spectrum and then a sequence of high resolution spectra. If I display these you can see that you get far better energy resolution than you do from the survey spectrum. Let's just display these. Let's go for 3, 1, 1 and select these and press the button that says add regions you have immediately got regions defined on these spectra and the relative sensitivity factors have been brought in from the element library and the reason that this can happen is because each one of these spectra have the correct element transition assigned to the VAMAS blocks and the element transition is what you see in the in the top part of the display in the right hand side so this connection with the actual meaning for these data in terms of oxygen 1s, carbon 1s and aluminium 2p has allowed the element library to load the appropriate sensitivity factors for these elements. Having simply created some regions, the first step might be to go to the report spec page and just select the regions standard report and we've used a configuration file that has output the experimental variable which is zero the name which comes from the region name then its calculated position is reporting the relative sensitivity factor that was used it's also reporting the transmission function values that we used in the quantification these are the raw areas calculated above background and the atomic concentrations so using these three regions we can produce a report and the first thing that we might want to do is see how this relates so if we We've, we've got an aluminium foil, the first thing we would like to see is that the aluminium and the oxygen are in a given proportion so let's go to the report spec and look at what the ratio is of oxygen to aluminium and I press the area report and you can now see that the ratio of oxygen to aluminium is 1.22 which is not quite what we'd expect and hence the high resolution spectra were measured so that we can then further analyze the aluminium peak to separate out the oxide from the metal. We would have expected the oxygen and aluminium to be in the ratio of 3 to 2 for the aluminium foil and the reason that it is not is the aluminium signal is split into an aluminium oxide which should have the correct ratio and additional signal which is metallic so in order to work out the ratio for the aluminium oxide we need to remove the metal from the signal of the aluminium 2p and we'll do that by introducing a background and creating a peak model so the background is a U2 two guard background and we'll go for the component and introduce some synthetic components here we've got one peak here which has come in as a an oxide so I'm going to thin this down and then I'll move this over to the metal and we'll do that again because we've got a clear doublet in the metal so I'm putting two peaks in here and then I'm going to have one more for the oxide so I'm adjusting the oxide peak and then I say fit and we get a, a peak model here which is fitting to the data using the, the three synthetic components so these two are metal I'll use the same name for both of the metal peaks and then the oxide peak here I'll call oxide so we can now differentiate between the different signal so we could now compare the aluminium signal from the oxide against the region so we could do that I first of all need to make sure that I don't have the same name for the region and components so if I select these two and I go to the report spec I can then look at the ratio of oxygen to the aluminium oxide and use the custom report to do this and now we see that the ratio is 1.58 so we're getting closer to what we'd expect compared to what we had before but right now there seems to be a little bit too much oxygen before we had too much aluminium so although this peak model looks reasonably good what we have to do now is 
refine it to make sure that the signal that we're getting is is appropriate so you see the fit can be estimated how good it is from the residual and the residual standard deviation is 1.7 we'd expect it to be about unity so we need to refine this a little bit so we'll begin with by refining first of all the oxide peak and you can see that the wings of the oxide are quite extensive so what I'm going to do is apply a little more um, Gaussian contribution and then say fit again and now I've got a, a new fit here and you can see now that the oxide is starting to pick uh, pick the data quite nicely so that, that adjustment to the peak shape has worked quite well but we've still got some structure here that we would like to accommodate by the metal so now we need to introduce some asymmetric component to this peak and so I'm going to set the first parameter to be less than one and I'm going to set the second parameter to be greater than one then that has the effect of extending the line shape on the left and suppressing it on the right in other words asymmetry and what I'll do is I want to propagate that to the other peak that I'm assigning as a metal so I can do that by entering at the beginning a hash and pressing return it'll say update all components with the same component index I say yes and that's why I changed these to have the same component index so now I've got two components with the same line shape and I can say fit and we're already starting to look like we're we're pretty good in terms of fitting the data not quite so good here so let's try a little bit more um, let's give this a bit more room. I've suppressed the line shape by giving it a 55 in that third parameter. I'm making it 255 and that will allow it to extend further. So I'll do the same for this one. And we'll say fit again. So there's a new a new residual. It's less than one uh, that's not atypical for this type of data from a multi multiple channel detecting system they, the residual does turn out to be less than unity for these systems because you have an element of smoothing when you combine the detected channels so that now looks like a plausible peak model the other thing to check is the effective RSF which is calculated from the RSFs for the components and compared against the RSF that's used in the um, in the region and if this number here is turning out to be very close to the RSF and it is then your peak model is not only fitting well but the line shapes within it are approximating the signal reasonably well too so having done this let us go back to the custom report and let's reevaluate what we've got here and now that's interesting because having improved the quality of the fit we now have got the value apparently getting worse so it's 1.66 we're, we're expecting 1.5 so if we now consider have we done a good fit here uh, probably so so let's see what else we have and when you look at the carbon you can see a, a peak here which is going to be carbon bonded with oxygen so actually the oxygen peak itself is not a simple peak that this must have other components in there hence the the ratio was not quite what you'd expect. So by doing peak fits you can refine your understanding of the data.